Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today we're going to try and fix this Dell monitor here. So this has come all the way from the Netherlands and it was sent over by Marcel, so big thanks to Marcel. What I've done is I've bought a bit of a job lot of 40 items. So with this one here, apparently it does not turn on. Now I know nothing about this monitor. I knew it kind of looked a bit on the old side, but extremely good quality. So with the stand, basically the stand allows you to like lift it up, lift it down, swivel it, swivel it this way, tilt it. It just looks like it's really good quality. Good thing about this as well is that if you uh, unhook that thing at the that sort of square there, push that button in there, it allows you to put this monitor so it's upright. So you know if you were playing some kind of like retro arch or something and you wanted to do like a, uh, uh, a shoot them up game style where you're traveling up the screen, then you can turn this monitor this way round. So I knew when I unpacked it, it looked very good quality, but then I typed it into Google and I'm amazed. It is basically a 1440p, it's a Dell 27 inch. This is the model number U2713HM, 60 hertz as you would expect. It's a WQHD, which means wide quad high definition. Uh, and it's an IPS panel, and it's eight milliseconds, which is more than quick enough for me. My uh, reactions, and I'm, I'm never gonna need a monitor less than that. So, in this instance here, this is something that I would actually use myself, because in my house, I've got two monitors. I've got a 720p one, and I've got a 1080p one. But this one, although it might be a little bit large to be sat right in front of, the very fact is 1440, and apparently it's supposed to have a really nice display. I would like to get this one working. Now, because it's from the Netherlands, it comes with like this kind of uh, EU-style plug. Uh, I'm not sure because in the UK we have an earth pin as well. So I'm not going to put this into any converter. I am actually just going to use a separate lead. So this is the cable that I use for my soldering station. So I'm going to use this one and then if I do need to do some soldering on this, then uh, by then it will probably be unplugged anyway. So first of all, let's plug it in and let's see if we can get any life out of it. I've had a quick look online and there's not that much info about it not working, but what some people say is you just need to hold down the power button here for I think it was 10 seconds or something like that, eight to 10 seconds. So let's plug it in just to verify that it is dead. And then let's see if that simple thing will reset it. If not, let's take it apart and that should be quite exciting. Right, so I'm gonna plug it in now and I presume a little light should light up somewhere. So here we go. Right, plugged in. I can't see any light, but then again, I don't know whether it should be lighting up or not. There's definitely nothing happening there. So now let's do, uh, let's see what happens when we try to power it on. Oh, hold on a minute. I can see, oh, uh, I think it's a display problem. I can see, look, can you see there's like, uh, oh, I didn't see that before. Look here, it looks like there's a crack here. Can you see, not a crack, but it looks like it's, it's leaked, it's different. I think the panel's gone. Ah, oh, that's a real shame. I thought it was going to be an electrical problem. Anyway, let's have a look, see what happens when we do try to turn it on. I could be, I could be lucky, but that doesn't look right. Well, there's nothing happening there. Let's hold it on for about 10 seconds. Also, I can see damage over this side as well, down here. Remember, there's a lot of dust on it. Let me just bring it in to actually show you. See if you can, I'm not sure if you can see with the lights. Hold on. You can definitely see that one there, look. There, now you can see it there. So there's that one, there's this massive one, and there's also something down here as well. Right, well look, it's definitely not turning on, so I'm going to unplug it, and now I'm going to hold down the button here again for about 10 seconds. Oh, I'm really disappointed now, because I, if it's a panel problem, then I know it's just like that little TV I had, it's very unlikely that it's going to be fixed, because the panels cost as much as the monitors normally. But still, even with a cracked screen, it should come on, shouldn't it? See, maybe the original problem was that... Uh, Maybe the uh, maybe the power went, and then in storage it would be very easy to break this, or even in transport. Now remember, I'm not saying it is that, but that definitely isn't right, and it's not dirt. Right, so nothing's happening there. Let's plug it back in again. And let's turn it on. Right, 
Right, no, there's nothing happening at all. So that's good news. Let's take it apart. And uh, it's still going to be interesting to see what's causing the power problem, even if we can't get it to work. So, uh, yeah, let me set up my camera and let's uh, have a look at the back and see how we can get this apart. So the only screws I can see are these four screws here. I, uh, that's definitely not going to make the whole thing come off. But look closely here. You can see that there's marks here. So it looks like the back's clipped on. And unfortunately, it does look like this has been pried off before, which is... Uh, which is a bit of a shame because I thought it might be, I thought I might be the first one in here, but that's definitely. I, I don't think that's just from not being uh, bashed around because look, the rest of it is absolutely perfect, and I suppose if you were taking it apart, you probably would start at the bottom here. So I think it's definitely been prized open. Yeah, look, it looks like it's unclipping now. Now, I've got to be careful because remember 240 volts is going straight into here. Obviously I've unplugged it now there's nothing there connected into it but there still might be charge in some of the capacitors on the inside. bezels all coming up. Right, so where's that ribbon cable gone? So the ribbon cable's over this side. Oh, there we go, that's how you do it. Right, so you don't take off the black, you take off the silver. And then can you see the four screws? So that's the reason why it wasn't coming out, because there's a screw in each corner. So the only one I haven't broken is that one there. So yeah, if I was doing that again now, it's really obvious. You take off this one here and not the black. But when you're doing something for the first time, you don't know, do you? Right, okay, so what have we got here? Let's spin it back around the other way. Right, well that cable's out there, but maybe that was, maybe that was me now. That's just for the USBs anyway. That's not gonna stop it from working, is it? That could have been me just now knocking it. Right, so I suppose we've got to take off this bit here so we can get to the, the circuit board on the inside. This must be for the backlight here. And this cable up here must be for the actual image. Yeah, there we go. Or maybe that's the backlight next to it, I'm not sure. This ribbon cable would be for the little buttons. Let's take this off. So look, the screen Samsung. You can see up here, there's a little sticker. LTM27, what's that, 0DL02, Samsung screen. This just seems to want to come off as a whole, so I think what I'm gonna do is disconnect each of the ribbon cables and then uh, just turn this upside down because I can't really see how it comes apart. Right, well the power button was disconnected. Look, that's not being connected, so 100% this has uh, this has been apart before, so I think what we need to do is plug the power back in and then turn it on, and I bet you then we'll see a cracked screen. So let me just see how this is supposed to go in. I don't think I mean it could have been me unplugging it, but I'm not so sure. Oh, well that just looks like a pressure fit in there. It doesn't look like there's any little flap or anything. 
Yeah, that's just a pressure fit. I mean, it could have been me. That could have been me. But I think we should. I think we should put it back together just to see. Let's see what it does now. That's still got no power at all. No, there's nothing lighting up there. That's completely dead. Oh, well, that's strange. I thought that was going to be. Uh, I thought that was going to come back on, but I thought there'd be just a cracked screen on it. Right, let's turn this over again gently. Well, I'm just going to unplug this cable down in the very corner. Here we go. So now I can actually move this panel out of the way. All right. So now we have access to the two boards. So I'm thinking. Uh, this is going to be the power board, and this is the board that actually controls what's on the uh, what's on the screen. So let's undo both of them. Right. Okay. That one there again is disconnected from here, and I didn't exactly yank that up to disconnect it. Could that be why it's not displaying? Do you know what? 100% this has been apart before. There's too many things that's disconnected. So let's uh, let's plug this one back in. I don't know, there could be more things disconnected this side, but let's put that back together now and let's see if it makes any difference. Still don't have any lights lighting up anywhere. No. Okay, let's uh, <laughs> take it apart further. Okay, so that's the uh, board that has all the different outputs. Let's have a look at this one. I'm just going to disconnect this cable here. Oh no, I don't think I can. Let's just bend that up there. There we go. Right now we have we have it out here. So let me just put it somewhere where it's not going to cause a spark. And then I want to check those capacitors to make sure they're definitely drained. So the 240 volts is coming in here and it looks like there's like a demarcation on the board if you look in here closely so this must be like between the high and low voltage can you see there's a line going up here through these transformers and across here something in this side here and this side I'm thinking is the lower voltage and this side here is the higher voltage so we have a huge capacitor there a huge one so let me get my little drainer thing and let's see if well first of all let's get some multimeter see if there's anything in it right so this is the negative side here it's just on uh, dc yes there is you see 165 volts look this is why you've got to be so careful can you there see 160 volts I don't know if you can see that or not. Dropping pretty fast though, isn't it? Yeah, but that would still give me a nasty shot. 150 volts. So let me get my little uh, resistor clamp thing. Right, so in here I have a, I can't remember, uh, a, a massive resistor basically, and that should convert the energy in here into heat. So I'm going to clip on that side there. Bang! Only joking. 
here we go and now I'm just going to gently tap that there, I'm not sure how long I'm going to have to leave it on for I'll just fast forward through it, I'll leave it on for about 20 seconds or so some people just use a screwdriver to go to short across them but I'm, uh, I did that once and it caused a bit of a bit of a bang just see if that's made any difference there you go can you see now 0.5 volts so in theory that should be safe is there anything else I need to worry about uh, bear in mind remember don't copy what you see in my videos for definite because um, I don't really fully understand the ins and outs of everything but I'm thinking look if I'm looking round here that that is the only like big capacitor so I'm hoping now that it will be safe to work on there you go 1.5 volts yeah see my screwdriver there we go okay so I've shorted across them now so it's fine just for curiosity I am just going to short across the other capacitors and stuff but they're uh, do you know what they're on the low voltage side anyway so that's not going to make a difference well I say low voltage I don't know what the low voltage is on this Right, I'm thinking that's going to be okay to work on. I'm just going to use the back of my hand so then it will throw me away rather than grab onto it. Yeah, I'm happy now that I can work on that. I can see there's a little bridge there on those two pins, but that looks intentional. Right, so it's showing no power at all. So I wonder, is it going to be an issue in here? I mean, where's the uh, 240? And then we've got loads of things coming out. So this is feeding one of the boards. Sort of forgot where they're all going off to now. So this looks like it's going down maybe to the LCD. But I'm not sure about that. And then we've got one feeding this board here, haven't we? So this goes on to here. Like that. Can't remember where this one goes off to. Oh, this goes must go to here. Yeah. Right, look at this, see, T3, so uh, 15 amp, 250 volts, so I'm sure that's a fuse, and it does say here as well, caution, for continued protection against the risk of fire, replace only with same type and ratings of fuse. And if I look on the other side, let me zoom out a little bit, so basically, remember the top one's going to be the earth, yeah, and then we've got the two bottom ones here, and if we look at the two bottom ones, one of them goes straight up to here, which is that side of the fuse, isn't it? Yeah, then it goes through the fuse. So I wonder if the fuse is blown. So let's uh, let's just do a quick continuity test. See if we've got anything across that fuse. Yes, we have. Well, I suppose we're going to have because the capacitor's getting charged up, isn't it? So now, how am I going to? Where do I have to measure to see whether we've got power coming out of this board here? And into here, would it be on certain pins on here? Is it marked up at all? I mean, even if the screen was cracked, surely it should still come up with like a standby light or something on the buttons. Right now, it looks like it's completely dead. The solder joints there look okay. So there should be a bridge rectifier somewhere that turns it from uh, AC to DC. But the only one that I recognise is the one from the PlayStation 4, so uh, I don't know what that would be here. Uh, would it be these, I wonder? Doesn't take me long before I feel out of my depth. Okay, so quite a few hours have gone past, and uh, I've been doing quite a bit of work on this, just 
off camera, basically I've looked online and I read the instructions. What's kind of interesting is that there is another 12 volt jack here and that is to connect it in to a soundbar so you can actually get a separate soundbar and it can be powered from here. So I did the usual stuff, obviously I thought it could be a problem with this one here. If this wasn't connected properly then the light's not going to light up and secondly the button's not going to work when you press it. If you have a look there is a tiny little light here. I think it should be on blue on standby and white when it's working doesn't matter about the colours, there should be something happening and there's not. This is since I've been working on this that has not lit up once. So I thought maybe it might be a fault with this ribbon cable or this. So I did a continuity test which basically involves... There we go. So we know 100% that this is working. So then I thought, okay, screen's not lighting up and stuff but maybe power's getting to the USBs so what I did is I just plugged in this to see if it would charge via any of the USB ports and it didn't so 100% power's not getting to it at all which made me then think it must be a problem with this power supply board here. Well, what I did is I plugged in this cable here. Now, obviously, you've got to be so, so, so careful because you can kid yourself. There's 240 volts going into this. But let me just show you. If I zoom in a bit, not too much because I want to be able to show you the connectors. We've got connectors going off here, here, and also the LCD. Now, you wouldn't expect the LCD to light up when it is off, yeah? but you would expect the standby circuit to be on. So basically, as soon as I plug this in, we should be getting some kind of light in this one. So let's just pop this one back in. Well, do you know what? We don't even need to worry about this at the moment because, as you will see, there's no voltage coming out of this board here. So I don't know if the standby is going to be on this one or this one. I'm pretty sure that this one goes down to there, okay? Looking at my other TV, I'm almost certain that that's for the LCD. But Regardless, that's not going to be live by just plugging it in because otherwise the LCD would be lit up or the LED panel would be lit up and then you're going to be wasting electricity. But we should have the standby so that then when we press this button, it will come on. But that's not, uh, that's not happening at all. So what I did is I just got myself a, 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 an earth, a ground, and I was going between the pins here and the pins here and the pins here and nothing was happening. So now, because this board is in separate parts, it's kind of like between high, high uh, power and low power, again, if you go to continuity, look, you can see that where the demarcation line is, everything will be uh, ground between there. But look, it won't be ground on the higher voltage side. Yet if we go to the higher voltage side, you can then hear that everything, well not that one, but these ones here are ground. I'm not sure if this is ground here or not. No. Okay, so it looks like there's different circuits. And uh, as far as I can see, the reason we would have different circuits is we're going to have one circuit for the standby, so maybe one transformer for the standby, one, uh, maybe even another, would you have another transformer for this 12 volt outlet here? That might be different voltage needed than, for example, going over to this board here. Uh, again, I don't know if this is going to be different voltage than here, but watch this now. As I say, please don't copy me at home because you could get electrocuted. At this moment in time, it's not plugged in. I've, uh, the capacitor here is dis discharged. But look, if I plug that in there, and then if I plug that into here, making sure I keep my hands well away from the capacitor or any of the live components, and if I go to DC voltage here, and if I pick myself a ground, for example, here, and if I go between every single one of these pins, it's not showing me anything. And surely one of them should be showing me like 3 volts or 5 volts or something like that. Yeah? So I've gone across every single one of the board, and the only one that's showing me anything is one up here, which is showing me, I think, minus 0.2 volts or something on one of them. I think it's further up. That's in my way now. I don't... Let's put that behind there. Yeah, minus 2.1 volts. But interestingly, when I plug that into this board here, then that disappears. So I don't know whether it's then getting used up by something. I'm, I'm not sure why that disappears, but watch this now. If I go onto the same one, make sure that is the same one. It was the orange, wasn't it? There we go. You see I'm getting nothing. Uh, so would 2 volts or you know minus 2 volts be enough to power this whole board and stuff? 
I'm I'm not so sure. I'm thinking it should be like five volts or twelve volts, maybe going off to uh, off to the standby. So then that made me think that maybe the issue was with here. Now uh, let me just double check a few things. So remember I said about I couldn't see the bridge rectifier earlier. So I believe what happens is you've got two 40 volts coming in AC. Then it goes through some filtering to stop like noise coming back down the line to affect maybe other equipment in your house or something. Now have a look here, there is actually a bridge rectifier hiding underneath this heatsink. And if I go on the outer two pins, it is the DC, I think, yeah, because it's labelled up minus and positive. So those outer two pins is going to be really high, something like 330 volts DC. And the inner two pins are AC, and they're not labelled up because it's AC, it's alternating. And if I go across there, I definitely do have voltage. So let me show you this now. Again, please don't copy me. Uh, let's go on to AC first of all, because that's the one going into it. So I'm going to go on to here. Let's see if you can see my meter. Yeah. Here, I'm keeping my hands well away. And here. Wait for it, there you go. 238 AC. Now watch this on the DC. Positive this side here, and negative this side here. No, sorry, what am I doing? I'm on the AC. You could see it flashing up and down there because it was uh, I was on the AC. Right, hold on. I'm on DC now. Hands well away. There you go, three, two, five volts. Uh, and then we know the capacitor has charging already. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to unplug this and I want to discharge it again because I don't want to get electrocuted, obviously. Keep my hands well clear. And do it here for a good 15 or so seconds. So what's happening now? All that energy, all that energy in that capacitor there is being transformed into heat via the uh, via the resistor. And this way it slowly discharges it rather than just putting a screwdriver across it and basically discharging it in a split second. Right, okay, so now if I get my meter again, you will see now that's only reading one volt and now I can short it like that so it's safe to work on again so let's unplug this so basically i started concentrating my efforts around here and look at what i discovered so let me zoom right in now so you can see basically we have uh, various mosfets all these things on the heat sinks are mosfets and we have various different resistors and capacitors around sorry i also did an esr my esr meters out i esr every single capacitor on here really nicely designed board basically the negatives are all up the top of the board so when you flip it over it was all easy or really easy to do i even did esr check on this board here and again all the negatives are over this side of the board or to the right hand side so when you flip it over it was really easy to just quickly go and do them all and they were all showing as good cap with low esr and also none of them are bulging either so it wasn't a problem with that now, look, I, I can't believe I missed this earlier because now that I can see it, it's glaringly obvious. But I'm just going to show that board to you and see if you can see anything wrong with this board. I'm just going to hold it here. So you've got the whole board there. That's how you would normally be looking at it around that close. See if you can see what's wrong with it. Right, OK, can you see? Look at that resistor here. It's completely burnt on top. So let me zoom right in. There we go, so you can see now that that has definitely had, listen to it, listen. Yeah, it's completely burnt there. So I looked up what this thing is. Let me just get my bit of paper. Basically on this you have markings that say 2WJ and 0.6 ohms. I believe, again I could be wrong, that it's uh, it's a wire round, a wire wound resistor. It's also got 379 written on it. And uh, yeah, you can buy them off eBay. They, they don't seem to be that common. They're not like a normal resistor. I think the thing is they allow a lot more wattage through. And also the one above it here is down as a 378 and again 2 watts, but this one's a 0.47 ohms. So uh, I went across, because basically this one here is exactly the same as the burnt resistor there, but yet they're giving me different meter readings. So you can see this one here has got the same markings as this one here. And now if I was to just go to ohms 
and if I go across this one here, so this is 0.62 ohms, and if you look at my meter down here, you will see it will come up as, let me get it so the light's not shining on it. Right, there you go. So, there. So you can see now that we've got 1.28 ohms. So yeah, quite far away from 0.62. Remember, I am measuring it in circuit. I don't know whether it makes a difference on wire round or whether something else could uh, be affecting it. But either way, you know, you can see that there is continuity through there. So for example, if I was to go to here, you can hear it beeping. But now look, if I go onto the burnt one, you can hear it's not beeping. If I go onto this one above it, you can hear it's not beeping. If I go onto these ones here, they are beeping. So every other wire wound resistor is beeping and giving me a, a reading that is not not really exact, but you know, kind of close-ish. So these ones here are 0.27, and if you have a look, they're coming up as 0.7 ohms. So they're still well out, but maybe that's okay. But look at this one above here now on the ohms one. You can see that it's like in the mega ohms, and again on this one here, it's in the mega ohms. So 100%. Oh, that's in the kilo ohms now. One second now. Okay, well, whatever. 63 kil uh, kilo ohms is still well away from being uh, nearly uh, a short. So basically, these two are definitely, as far as I'm concerned, failed. Now, look at this. We have two MOSFETs, well, we've got loads of MOSFETs, but these two MOSFETs read exactly the same, and they are M12N70F. I believe they're N-channel MOSFETs, but that's just from memory when I quickly looked online. Again, they don't seem to be very common. I can get them from China, but I'm going to be waiting quite a long time. As far as I could see, unless they go on a different name, I can't get them from places like RS Components. But watch this. Again, let's just put it to continuity, just for, for ease. If I was to go between the shield, so I think that this MOSFET's good, and I think this one's bad. Now, if I go between the shield and this pin here, which is, what was it shorting? I think it was shorting from gate to source on this one. But look, you can see it's shortened there on the right-hand side, but then it's not shortened on the other two, okay? But on the right it is. Now, even when I go across the other MOSFETs, these are marked up differently, but they all short to the right-hand side. Yeah? Yet this one doesn't. But more importantly, watch this. This one's shorting all over the place. So can you see the two pins there are shorting? No, not if it was just uh, a couple of ohms different, then it wouldn't be shorting. But you can definitely see that it's quite, uh, quite low resistance between them. Yeah? And then if I go between there and the middle one, it's all shorting. Yet if I do that on this one here, can you see it's not happening? Across there? Hold on, that was just uh, the, uh, what's it called? The shield there and there yeah you see it's not doing it and if I swap it around it's the it's the same and if I go to uh, that one there if you have a look now between here and here so just the outer two we've got 48 ohms and if I go between here and here we have 19 kilo ohms swap the leads over it should still be 19 so I think this is I think this is the source and the, the gate yeah, and swap them here, and you can see. So as far as I'm concerned, that MOSFET there is 40. Let's go between there and the middle one. And I've got, there you go, near enough, well, that's nearly a full short, isn't it? Two ohms, and if I go between here and here, you can see that it's in the mega ohms, yeah? And again, if I do the red lead in the middle and go to that one there, again, it's, uh, what's that, 91? It's climbing, but uh, it's in the killer ohms. And if I go between here and here, can you see again 49? So I'm pretty sure that that MOSFET is 40. So now, what am I going to do about it? Unfortunately, I'm not going to do anything about it because I'm convinced that the screen is damaged. The screen should not be like that. It's got a huge liquid spill on it in numerous cases. How can it have that liquid spill on it? I'm going to try to show you it with the, the lights off so you can get a better view. Right, I think that's probably the best view. With my eyes, it's really obvious, but it's so hard for the camera to pick up. Look, can you see it going up here? And back down here, yeah? And up here, and back down there. So that is... I'm pretty sure. I mean, why would that be there? That's leaked, isn't it? 
in which case then it makes me not want to buy any components for it because what's the point of trying to fix the MOSFETs and those, it'd be different if I had them, but what's the point of trying to fix them if the screen's gone? Because we know already that when screens go on TVs and stuff like that, that is the, the, the main thing, it's unfixable unless somebody's selling a second hand one. And they're not, because the main problems of these things are that the screens go faulty. So again, if I type in this Dell one here, they're all up on 200 quid and more, unless you get them for 100 pounds, and every single one of them, which is spares or repair, has a cracked screen. Because I haven't typed in the panel, but looking at the TV panels before, you can't get panels. They're too, they're too expensive. It's cheaper just to go and buy a new monitor or TV instead. So basically, uh, I'm convinced that that the display is faulty, hence the reason I don't want to waste any more time on this, which is really unfortunate. What I would be slightly tempted to do, slightly tempted, is to try and get the standby light on here. So I am, this is what I'm thinking I may do, but it's a bit awkward because you see if I put it on YouTube and do something dangerous, then you see it's uh, it's not really it's not really the right thing to do, is it? But what I'm thinking about doing is I'm wondering if you've got various different circuits going off to do different things, yeah? So for example, we know that there's going to be a 12 volt one coming here. By the way, there's nothing coming out of here. I can't get any voltage, but maybe you have to enable that in the settings via the other board. But this MOSFET is the same as this one. This resistor is the same as this one. This resistor is 47. There's no other ones of them. I was wondering what if I was to change the MOSFETs over and change the resistors over, would it then liven up part of the board that does the standby voltage? So for example, the TV still wouldn't turn on because it wouldn't then liven up the main voltage going through, but I was wondering whether it would liven up something just to do the, the 5 volts, or by doing that, am I then going to blow another further component? Again, it's pointless doing this because this monitor will not be working. But part of me wants to do it just to see if we can get the light lit up here. Uh, but then again, we're not going to have a, a display, are we? We're not going to have the backlight because maybe these resistors are for the backlight. I don't know. Or could I just put a tiny, you know, just a, a weak resistor, uh, a, a 0.47, just a tiny resistor, just to see if it would last long enough just to give me some kind of standby voltage. So that's what I'm... Uh, do you know what I might do? I might have a look in my resistor pack and I might see if I've got a, a 0 0.62 or thereabouts and a 0 0.47. I know they'll probably burn out instantly because these need to be 2 watts and the ones I have are probably just, I don't know, I don't know what they would be, maybe not even a fraction off a watt. But I wonder would it give me a blue light just for a split second? Again, there could be other things. There could be diodes and stuff wrong. But I think, do you know what? I think I'm going to try that. I'm not going to film it because it's, it's kind of pointless. You're not going to learn anything from it. But I will film it just before turning it on. What's the worst that's going to happen? Something might go bang. Something may... It's not even going to go on fire because I can unplug it before it does. And even if it does, I'll unplug it. And then I can just have a, a wet towel or something near it to, to throw on it. As I say, don't copy what you see in my videos. But I think it would be interesting just to see. So I'm going to swap a few things around. And then I'm going to film it again when I'm just about to plug it in. What I decided to do is I took out the MOSFETs that I got when I was fixing the PlayStation 4 Slim. And yes, they're different, but they're still N-channel fast switching MOSFETs. I think these ones are 600 volts, while the ones that were in here originally are 700 volts. Uh, they could be completely different for all I know. Remember, I'm just doing this purely just for the video to see the outcome if we can get anything on the screen. But if you have a look, this is one of the PlayStation 4 ones and this is the one that I've just taken out, the 41 from the board. And if I was to go to the uh, ohm reading here and go across the good one, just on the, for example, on the uh, outer two here, you can see that it's not reading anything yet. Yeah? But yet on the failed MOSFET, that I think it's the failed MOSFET, it's reading 68 ohms. I'm almost certain that that has gone faulty. Like I said, there might be many, many, many other things. Now, this is what I've done here. So I've just put the MOSFET in there now. And remember how I said it wasn't shortened to uh, uh, the right hand, the ground wasn't shortened to the right hand one? Well, it is now on this one. So if I go between here and here, 
I didn't change this one over, that's still the original one. This is the one I changed. So rather than swapping them over, I actually just got the PlayStation 4 MOSFET and put it in here. Also, the readings when I go to pin to pin are actually pretty similar. So now if I just go to ohms there and if I go on to the uh, outer two, this one's coming up as 19 kilo ohms and this one is 21 kilo ohms. Might make a huge difference, I don't know. And look at this monstrosity that I've done for the resistors. So I've got the resistors down to two ohms by putting, I didn't have any, the lowest uh, resistor I had was uh, a, a 10 ohm resistor. So I've just put a load in parallel. I'm not sure when I put them in parallel whether that's gonna be good for the wattage because I don't want these all to burn out instantly. Maybe by putting them all in parallel I have increased the wattage as well, I'm not sure. But I'm still a long way off. This should be 0.47 I think it was and 0.62 and they're both reading around about, I think it's about two, let's have a look. Yeah, there we go, well 2.6. And I've left the old resistors in place and 2.2 so that one is lower look i'm just gonna i'm just gonna go with it and see what happens so i'm gonna put this back together next time you see this now we will be ready to turn the tv on the kitchen now it's uh, back together but it hasn't got any off the back on it it's all exposed at the back and i did forget to mention on that mosfet that i put in its place the gate source and drain were all in the same place because i think on some of them it can vary but i was lucky and basically they were the same as the one i took out well here goes i'm going to plug it in now so let's uh zoom in a bit on this thing not too much in case it explodes well i'm just going to st stand back a bit i'm quite apprehensive here we go oh what a letdown there's still no light is there No. I really thought that was going to do something. I really, really thought that was going to do something. Ah. So I'm thinking that this has had some sort of surge. There's nothing there at all, is there? I think you can press reset by holding these two down for 10 seconds. He goes into some sort of software mode. The very fact there's no light there is uh, saying that there's no power getting over to that board. Yeah, there's nothing happening there. Oh well, look, I, I think I gave it my best shot. I think the problem here is maybe there was some kind of power surge on the line, just like the PlayStation 4. There was some like uh, lightning strike nearby that uh, then, then blew the PSU. I think there's more problems wrong with that PSU. But in the meantime, I think in storage or transit, I think the screen's gone. I won't be doing a revisit on this one because it's pointless. I don't want to spend any more time on the, the PSU because at the end of the day, what am I going to do with it? I'm not going to sell it and the screen is definitely leaked. Something's happened here anyway. So just like that TV one I did, it looked perfect when it's off, but when it was on, you could then see all the, uh, the, the, the cracks and the breaks and stuff. And I think that's the same here. So uh, yeah, unfortunately that is it for this video. I have still kind of enjoyed it. Normally the stuff I get from Marcel has been like, really good stuff, stuff that hasn't been messed around. So I was a little bit unlucky with this one, but not every single item can be a dream item. As far as my channel's going at the moment, I've had a real, real bad run at the moment. And I really thought that today might be different. But uh, it's not the case, but who knows? You never know, my next four or five fixes might go according to plan. I think with something like this, you're against it from the start. I don't think anybody would really waste their time on it once they've seen that the screen was a bit iffy. So, uh, yeah, that is it. I'm so sorry, but uh, at least it didn't go on for an hour and a half. If you got any enjoyment from it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more trying to fix videos. Take care. Bye now.